All right, well, hello everyone uh, and a very warm, warm welcome. Welcome to this webinar. It's part of the series that they thought is hosting together with Microsoft and my name is Alexi Miller. I'm a co-founder, managing director at Thetard. I'll be your moderator today. And joining me uh, are Brian Stockbrugger of Microsoft and Yuri Zaryadov, uh, my colleague at Thetard. I wanted to welcome everyone and remind that this is part of a series that we're hosting, series of events that we're hosting together with Microsoft, with whom we are very pleased, very happy to have uh, over 20 years of partnership. We'll talk more about that. And today we are continuing with the theme that we started some time ago around data modernization, data platform modernization using the latest and greatest cloud technology to, to get there with a particular emphasis around security, which uh, is something important for every business out there. Uh, it's a cliche to say that data is the new gold. And I think at this point, there's plenty of evidence that uh, well-designed, modern, high-performance data platforms in the cloud do improve business performance, do enable companies to be more agile and implement new digital systems for themselves and new experiences for their customers and generally make them more com uh, competitive. Today, we want to explore, rather than just advertise the benefits of it, uh, we want to explore this a little bit deeper. We want to talk about what the journey looks like. What are the stages of data platform modernization? How to um, organize it so it's secure and efficient? And we will particularly focus on uh, what's called zero trust in Microsoft Azure as one of the foundational elements of designing modern data platforms. Before we jump into things, I want to give my fellow panelists here uh, a chance to introduce themselves. So Brian, why don't you go, go first? Great. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Alexi. Yeah, it's great to be here again. So, so thanks for uh, letting me uh, participate in this um, second second webinar. So, I'm Brian Stockbrugger. I'm a uh, senior security architect at, at Microsoft, and I'm part of our Microsoft Global Partner Solutions team. So, you know, in my role, I have the pleasure of working with our leading partners like DataHeart to help you know build services to help their customers achieve their digital transformation goals specifically using Microsoft technology. So I've been with Microsoft for about the past five years and worked in a number of different, you know, customer and partner facing roles, all kind of driving to the same goal of helping organizations, you know, better protect themselves in the ever changing digital world. So yeah, I'm super excited to be joining Alexi and Yuri today to, to talk about data platform modernization with Azure. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And if you are joining us from California today, is that right? That's correct. Southern right. California. Great. And jumping over to this side of this large country is my colleague, Adetart Yuri. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Yuri Zarada from based in New York. I've uh, been with Datart for 12 years now. I'm a senior solution architect, uh, mostly focusing um, our uh, financial clients. Um, with, uh, with their journeys um, of not only um, data platforms, modernization, but um, other solutions. So we'll be happy to talk today. Awesome, awesome. Thank you both. Uh, we'll get started with Yuri's presentation. Particular, so uh, you, I think Yuri will focus on, on the journey on uh, how we see this pathway and how we in our practice, utilize Microsoft Azure uh, in helping clients on their cloud data platform uh, journey. Yuri, take it away. Sure. So uh, basically, um, before we jump into the journey itself, um, I wanted to cover um, the key drivers, why companies really do that. Uh, is that there, there's a certain reasoning, and this is quite important because um, the journey might be quite long, uh, but you need to uh, keep your priorities and your goals aligned <laughs> with, with, with how you approach it. So, and um, we can extract several 
uh, key types of drivers uh, for the companies we observe um, for, for that migration, for modernizing their data platforms. Um, we, we all know that data grows, um, grows a lot and um, because of um, all the environment around us becomes more digitalized, more smart devices, more information uh, consumed, and um, th there could be some value in it um, uh, from that information. So uh, companies are looking for uh, leverage that data. So they, they start absorbing more and more um, uh, feeds and sources and try to process that. And of course, um, their existing platforms might be not capable of doing this. So they're looking to modernize their technology stack or to make it faster, or they need just simply expand it, make it more elastic. Um, they also might be looking to enable new capabilities like um, AI and ML, uh, try to uh, identify certain trends, anomaly detection. And when you were processing large volumes of data, the old fashioned um, analysis tactic might not be working well. So um, that's where new stack and modernized platform becomes handy. Um, so moving to moving on to, to these common cases, basically um, looking at how companies are moving through this journey, um, we can extract um, four most common patterns. And these are really the ones which are cloud related because today our main topic is really how we, how we want to, to do this uh, modernization in the cloud. Um, and it can vary all the way from the companies just starting their cloud journey and they getting to the cloud from on-prem and they just need simply perform this initial lift. And um, this, this can be um, very, very easy the case. Um, the second would be then once they migrated and if they were just migrating with a lift and shift, uh, literally not performing so much of an improvement uh, to, the, to the data platform architecture, they're looking to transform it to more cloud native approach and that's where the second case arises. Um, during this journey, they can also continuously improve their platform looking for better tools or more, more cost-effective approach or more performant approach. So this will create another use case uh, for, for the modernization. And in some cases, uh, this instead of this evolutionary approach, uh, gradually improving their systems, uh, companies are simply uh, putting together a brand new platform in the cloud in parallel to their existing systems and then just migrating over um, later on uh, to, to the new platform. So all, all of these four use cases, they, they actually one way or the other covered um, by the common best practices for the cloud adoption and uh, covered by cloud adoption framework, uh, which we will be talking later today. So for moving through these use cases and uh, modernizing their data platforms, obviously, um, as, we, as we said, there, there are certain drivers uh, for the companies and um, besides their initial business goals they, they may have, um, there are other, um, other outcomes, uh, benefits uh, companies may achieve by performing this modernization. And that simply goes from the cost effectiveness. Um, it, it also can uh, introduce new business opportunities, introduce new uh, types of analysis, new New types of workloads you can you can run on these uh, data platforms, uh, but another very important factor here is um, security. So, um, any data platform uh, has this um, data which is 
an, another gold currency, as Alexa mentioned. So you need to protect it uh, very well on multiple levels. And um, with the ever-growing um, ways to communicate, to access the data uh, from mobile devices, uh, everyone working remotely, um, making sure that uh, your platform is fully protected and your full perimeter is fully protected. That's something we always need to keep in mind uh, during the journey. Um, one thing I wanted to um, specifically to specifically focus here is that in data art, we, we are uh, specializing a number of services we provide for our clients uh, for data platform modernization. And that goes all the way from um, building out uh, these new platforms, uh, running the um, analysis and uh, providing improvements and refactoring on the platform, uh, building the ETL solution, uh, building um, analytical and visualization um, solutions for uh, for the platform, um, running more advanced um, workloads uh, and enabling data and analytics. Um, and it also goes beyond the, the cloud hosted environment to hybrid environments, multi-cloud environments, um, computer vision data science. So, um, but getting back to to our topic today, um, I would like to cover the, the cloud adoption framework part on the journey for your data modernization and how this tool can help you. So in our previous um, webinar, we did uh, touch um, a little bit on the cloud adoption framework in general and um, set of tools it provides you to um, make your uh, migration, make your path uh, well-defined and make it predictable um, and, and, and set achievable goals and, and clear benefits. Um, so to properly plan it, properly run it uh, and, and turn um, some of your practices and, and, and um, teams in, into more cloud-oriented because just getting things to the cloud um, a lot of the times is not enough. Uh, you also need to change the way company works, the way your teams operate. So it is sort of uh, the mind shift um, as well to that point. So um, using the cloud adoption framework, you can plan for your also data migration project, data modernization project, um, much better uh, taking into account all of the factors and um, precautions if, if needed um, for, for the whole process. So you, you're not uh, only running set of experiments, but you do this in a more predictable manner and um, set of particular tools which can help you on on this journey uh, provided by Microsoft um, is, is following. Um, so it, it starts from migration decision guide, which is um, an overall planning, uh, giving you ability to lay out what are the particular stages you need to go through. So you do not forget any of the aspects of, of, this, um, of this migration because for uh, for your teams, um, it's it, it may be very well not only going to the absolutely new technology stack, but also different mindset of how the operations should work uh, on top of it. So making sure that these processes are accounted for as a part of your migration, not only the technical part, uh, that is very important to consider. And as I said in the very beginning, uh, keep track of your goals. Um, you should not ever diverge from that because if, if you do so, your project will, will, will be never ending story. Um, so 
properly planning um, and uh, properly going through uh, through this plan is is set of tools uh, provided by CAV. So uh, besides the migration decision guide, uh, there are the tools uh, which which give you more planning control, uh, agreeing on the naming of your cloud resources, which is very important, especially if you have um, quite a large layout of services and you have quite a diverse platform. Um, and Azure Database Cost Estimate uh, complemented with a uh, total cost ownership tools and Azure Calculator will give you enough of transparency on how much you will be spending in the cloud once you migrate. You can also incorporate your interim state there so you, you understand um, the, you understand fully your budget for the project and you understand um, how your platform would evolve, how the cost of the platform would evolve. Uh, but besides these just planning, designing and estimation tools, um, CAP does provide some, some other more technical uh, solutions for you to really perform the migration itself. Um, which can be very handy and um, shorten so, some of the some of your um, some of the parts of your journey uh, a lot, and this will include obviously the data migration, the database migration service, uh, which is a very powerful tool. It gives you, um, as 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 it means, uh, ability to really um, transfer migrate your uh, databases to the cloud um, from your on-prem database engines uh, to the cloud managed instances. Um, but it also performs uh, compatibility um, inspection and provides you some reporting and, and visibility on whether your platform will work same effectively in the cloud or uh, you need to perform certain adjustments before you do the migration itself. Um, additionally to that, there are a set of templates um, which will help you to spin out um, resources in the cloud, uh, like data management zone template uh, um, as, as, a, as a just a part of a set of templates provided by CAF, which also includes landing zones, it includes um, very specialized types of landing zones where you need to ensure that a certain compliance and policies are enabled so uh, you are compliant with the regulatory requirements. Um, so these can get you a good jump start at the very beginning. So you will ensure those policies uh, on, on the whole organizational level by using these templates and then customizing on top of it, uh, adding your particular resources, your particular platform. And of course, Azure uh, Backup Service um, as, uh, as essential part of uh, any data platform to ensure that uh, you can always recover. So your, your data is safe uh, to, to perform cross-region replication, perform disaster recovery, um, in, in, in the right way um, as, as you need it to secure your backups and, and secure your data. And speaking of security, um, uh, today we're also gonna be covering um, the area of how you better protect your data platform, your application, your cloud, the whole cloud environment. And um, one of the good, uh, reliable practices there is zero trust. And that's where I'm uh, passing the word to Brian to talk further about the zero trust, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, great. Thanks, Yuri. So that was that was great context around, you know, cloud adoption framework and, and data modernization and, and the tools involved. <clears throat> so as Yuri mentioned, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to focus on you know zero trust and why zero trust as part of a data modernization of adoption and plan and digital transformation along this um, cloud journey. So 
So zero trust is, is really a key survival skill and really does help and is vital for digital transformation. So these statistics on this slide are taken from the Zero Trust Adoption Report by Microsoft that was published out in two, uh, 2021. So I would encourage you to, to take a look at this report. Um, kind of outlined in this report, it, it states that security decision makers are developing zero trust strategy as their top, you know, number one security priority and identifying that as, as critical to their organization. So, you know, this is as a result of, you know, COVID-19 and the shift to the hybrid workplace that, that we all kind of, you know, dealt with, um, increased shift to IT workloads and applications as part of a digital transformation journey as well as increase in, in cyber attacks and even employee misuse of technology, whether it's malicious or, or unintended. So the four key things to, to know about zero trust adoption, <clears throat> you know, as I mentioned, organizations are ready to, to capitalize on zero trust strategy, you know, accelerated by the move to this hybrid workplace and, um, you know, that we, that we saw with, with the COVID uh, pandemic. Zero trust strategy allows for the flexibility in where organizations can begin implementing. So the approach can be tailored to, to their needs. Um, you know, third thing here is, you know, while zero trust strategy is widely adopted and improves organizations' ability to manage threats, there is still work to be done. You know, implementing security is never done. It's, it's not, there's no finish line, it's never over. <clears throat> the attacks are evolving and the security controls and, and the security enforcements must be, you know, must also continue to evolve. So, um, you know, and then lastly, looking ahead, you know, zero trust strategy will remain a top priority and require careful decision making when it comes to employees and vendors. You know, organizations today are much different than in the past and must factor in such things as you know, business partners, supply chains, outside vendors. So organi organizations need to also be concerned with the security practices of others. So some of the top motivators here are, you know, to improve overall security posture, improve end user experience and, and productivity, transform and improve the way security teams, you know, work together, and then simplify the security stack and, and reduce security costs. So as quoted by Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, you know, our ambition is to help every organization adopt zero trust while reducing the complexity, cost, and risk created by stitching together point solutions. So Microsoft, we've over the course of the last number of years have developed an end-to-end -end security platform approach that, that is heavily rooted in zero trust that can simplify and, and improve security and show significant uh, cost savings. So Zero Trust provides that proactive and integrated approach to security that explicitly verifies every transaction, asserts that least privileged model and, and uses intelligence and advanced detections and real-time response to threats in that assumed breach approach. So on this slide here, you can see some of the, the top benefits from a zero trust implementation. So zero trust implementation is part of the cloud adoption framework as, as Yuri you know, discussed, and it's all part of the well-architected framework. So the well-architected framework really builds in security as part of the architecture, right? It's not an afterthought. It's, it's part of the, the overall framework and the architecture along this, um, you know, along this cloud adoption uh, methodology. So why do organizations take a zero trust approach and, and what are the benefits? So, you know, first is the increased agility with their business and the progression on their digital transformation journey. So being, you know, much more agile and able to innovate um, in the cloud. 
speed. So increase the velocity of cloud adoption and workload migration and application modernization. So being able to, you know, innovate, accelerate, adopt, um, you know, much, much faster to help, you know, organizations kind of get ahead against their competition, you know, meet the demands of their customers, et cetera. Uh, protection of customer data. So the cloud adoption and, and zero trust significantly improves and helps secure data, you know, more specifically sensitive data, things like, you know, PII data or um, regulatory, you know, specific data, things like HIPAA and, and um, uh, you know, FedRAMP, et cetera. So it also frees up, you know, the, the security team with the cloud adoption and security services, you know, in the cloud working for them to automate IT and, and security teams do not need to do so much you know, manual work and, and are free to work on more business impacting projects and, and more, you know, important work than managing the infrastructure. So, you know, that kind of creates the, the, you know, a need for fewer resources to manage that infrastructure. You know, as the cloud service adoption of, of IaaS and PaaS and SaaS, they reduce the level of effort that admins and, and engineers need to worry about the underlying infrastructure. And, and they can really focus on the more important things, such as data security, data management, um, data modernization and migrations, kind of as Yuri um, highlighted in, in previous slides. So organizations, as a result of their zero trust approach, are in a much better position to manage threats to their environment, especially those within you know, their IoT and operational technology environments. So the overall benefits are very high and very real, and they help organizations you know, be more efficient, more secure, and more innovative. All right, so... Sorry. Um, so data protection, you know, the, the rapid modernization plan is a, is a great place to start for organizations, you know, especially if they are in the early stages of their zero trust journey. So the, the ramp checklist helps, you know, protect your on-premises and cloud data from both inadvertent and malicious access. So inadvertent access occurs when, you know, user gains access to data that based on the roles, responsibilities, they should not have access to. You know, the result can be unintended or intended data leakage, data destruction, or violation of data security and, and privacy regulations. Um, malicious access occurs when an you know, external attacker or a malicious insider intentionally tries to access data. So, Malicious insiders can use their data to, to profit or to, to harm the organization. So, and external attackers can, you know, delete, alter, exfiltrate, encrypt, you know, sensitive data, you know, leaving organizations open to you know, ransomware attacks, et cetera. So both types of attacks, you must take the necessary steps to, you know, identify your data, protect it, prevent its destruction or exfiltration, and ensure that only users with business purpose have access to it. So protecting your data is part of the assume breach zero trust principle. So even with all, you know, even with all the user account and device protections in place, you must assume that an attacker can find their way in and begin traversing your network, searching for the most valuable data um, for your organization. So, there is no one size fits all approach to zero trust implementation and organizations, as I mentioned earlier, are able to start you know, where they need to. Organizations can, can start in, in different places, but usually they start with identity, move quickly, move as quickly as possible to, to data. Um, and the ramp checklist is, is a great guide to identify the critical layers of protection to get up to speed in identifying the fundamental deployment paths.
So with respect to data and, and implementation of zero trust strategy, organizations are using this ramp checklist, which is you know, part of the zero trust rapid modernization plan. And there are four key principles that, that should be followed, right? The first is know your data. Having the visibility and understanding of, of where all your important and critical information is across your data storage locations, both in cloud and on-premises environments is, is vital. If you don't know your data, it, you can't protect it. So protecting your data is you know, really about applying the necessary data protections on that most sensitive data that lives with the data throughout its entire life cycle. So this is done by doing things like applying sensitivity labels that have protection policies applied for things like encryption, access control and, and restrictions, as well as visual markings like marking a document as, as confidential or containing sensitive information. So that kind of really sets the foundation for preventing data loss, right? Being able to apply those data loss prevention policies across all scenarios that might exist, you know, for data to be leaked across cloud, on-prem environments via, you know, endpoints such as USB drives, you know, printing and, and story, uh, cloud storage and, and emailing out to personal accounts, you know, just to name a few. So this is all, this all includes you know, monitoring that access and activity at endpoints to prevent and remediate risky activities to the sensitive data. Um, so this may also include you know, things like taking screenshots or sharing in a, in a Teams meeting. It's all about pre protecting that data from getting in the wrong hands. Um, and then lastly is the use of, of least privileged access, right? I talked about this a little bit already, but you know, this is a key pillar within Zero Trust. A user should only have access to the data they need access to and can only perform the actions that they are allowed to do with that access and that meets those policy and, and business requirements. So remember, the business and, and policy drives that, um, that access. So in short, they should not have access to data that they are not authorized to have access to. Um, and access should be revoked if, if no longer required. <clears throat> okay, so there is the shared responsibility model for, for all cloud services. So the cloud service provider, you know, Microsoft in this case, you know, is responsible for enforcing, you know, many data security controls with the underlying platform and, and services to make sure that these underlying services, you know, meet you know, regulatory requirements and, and our commitments to the shared responsibility model. Um, but the customer is also responsible for enforcing data security controls at, you know, the service layers within their control. So as outlined in our zero trust best practices for data platforms, you know, we highlighted a few of these best practices. So identity, you know, is the security perimeter in the cloud and using an identity based access control, you know, method to grant and control access to, to data and things like blob and queue and, and table storage. You know, this can be defined and assigned to individual users, groups of users, as well as applications. So protecting access to that data based upon the identity of the user or of an application is a critical first step in securing data and preventing that unauthorized access. Um, you know, encryption, another best practice to protect data by enabling, you know, virtual disk encryption using, you know, things like Azure disk encryption to, to help the organization meet internal and external regulatory compliance requirements that, that require, you know, data to be encrypted. Um, and, you know, just recommended, you know, best practice security controls. Platform level encryption, you know, should be enabled such as, you know, Azure storage services to, to encrypt the storage at, at the service level. Um, in addition, you know, properly building a, a data map that shows data lineage of the data and then applying the appropriate, you know, labels and tags to the data based upon sensitivity, you know, using say Microsoft purview. So this is useful to protect data from 
unauthorized access to as well as you know prevent data leaks so this can all you know also include protection policies on data itself you know such as document and, and email level encryption so, <clears throat> so you know many useful links that can outline and, and help organizations assess and evaluate their overall security posture as outlined by the zero trust model and really help organizations to evolve and, and advance along the maturity levels based upon practical deployments and, and resources. So the best place to start is the Zero Trust Guidance Center, which includes several implementation architectures and, and deployment plans that can provide that foundation of a zero trust journey. So in the Zero Trust Guidance Center, you'll find guidance on building out that identity infrastructure I talked about earlier to support the data modernization plan, you know, whether it is part of a Microsoft purview information protection or purview data lifecycle management projects. It also includes how-to guides as part of this the rapid modernization plan or the ramp um, that can help define that user access and, and productivity as well as data compliance and, and governance um, recommendations and best practices. So the Zero Trust Posture Assessment Tool is a tool available to help assess and advise on current you know, maturity levels and recommend practical deployment resources. So Zero Trust Guidance also includes you know, how these data solutions can, can integrate with partner technology and the value that, that services you know, partners like Data Art can bring to a zero trust implementation and data modernization projects. So, you know, Data Art can help assess the current data state, develop this rapid modernization plan using the technology and the best practices that we discussed and the cloud adoption framework that, that Yuri was um, got into earlier. So they bring the expertise, the experience, of having completed projects like this in the past you know, with many other organizations you know, on their zero trust journey. So Data Art is a trusted Microsoft partner with many advanced specializations and, and years of experience working with many customers on, on data management, and data protection projects, and have developed some really great success stories in, in these as a result of these projects. So so Yuri, would you mind sharing some of these experiences on the work that the Data Art is doing with respect to data platform modernization? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. One one of the one of the use cases uh, we would like to uh, to talk about today uh, was uh, building the cloud-based data management and analytics platform for one of the leading asset alternative asset management firms. So. Data Art was hired by a company uh, to help uh, with, a, with, the, with their data platform needs, basically, because um, initially the, the analysis um, they were doing was performed all manually and all was time consuming and very hard to scale as they scaled, they were scaling business. So um, considering that they have this set of uh, multiple data sources, uh, the absence of unified a uh, place to store it and analyze it uh, resulted to the poor data visibility uh, and sufficient governance and um, lack of some security best practices. So Data Art was solving this by building the easy access analytics solution in Azure Cloud um, for uh, to enable users for um, there are self-service um, reports and dashboards uh, to, to run these processes on top of that platform. Um, and that unified approach um, for data loading um, by metadata-driven methodology uh, significantly accelerated uh, production process to onboard new, uh, new feeds and analyze those, incorporate them uh, into the, um, their analytics and research team. Also, platform allowed to uh, perform um, all the analysis and calculations for their effectiveness, ROI, and product portfolio. So this um, was um, like a, a very good example of um, uh, really building 
the, the platform re re revisioning approach to data management uh, from the cloud, native cloud first perspective, tools wise, uh, but it was fully in Azure based on uh, Azure cloud services like um, Azure SQL, um, using Azure storage, Azure data factory, Azure functions, uh, protected by Azure AD services and providing um, reporting through Power BI. Um, so this is one of the one of the cases. And of on top of it, um, uh, as I always um, warn um, uh, anyone who's going to get to the cloud, uh, the project was um, fully automated through Azure DevOps. So as you even plan to go to the cloud, plan for your automation strategy uh, from day one, because uh, repeatability of these steps increases and transparency of how things are configured so you can easily adjust it. And it also allows you a quicker scale uh, of your services um, and really adjust the platform, adjust uh, that to your needs. Um, fairly easy. All right. Well, I think um, it, it's time for for us to thank Yuri and Brian for the for the presentations. Very interesting stuff, and uh, I, I think the an example a case study always brings uh, these new ideas, new technologies into specific real life uh, example. We have a few minutes for questions and I will uh, try to torture Brian and Yuri with some of my own questions here and those coming from, from the audience. But before we do that, just a quick reminder uh, on the context for all of this, we, we, besides educating our friends and partners and clients on the, the latest and greatest in cloud and data technology, we obviously wanted to remind everyone uh, where we stand and uh, of this partnership that Datart has with Microsoft. We're very proud to have been working with Microsoft for over 20 years. We're a gold partner and uh, as a fairly large IT services provider and a long-term Azure consulting partner, we've, we're involved in hundreds and hundreds of uh, cloud migration and data platform modernization and new design projects and we wanted to take this opportunity to thank Microsoft and Brian specifically for their partnership, their support, the, they always exchange ideas and thoughts about where the, the market is going, what clients are thinking about and uh, Brian you're very generous with your time to join us and share these these ideals, ideas uh, uh, with 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 our clients and partners. So um, thanks again to both of you. Let me let me spend a few minutes discussing what we or maybe going back to some of the things that you've discussed. And I want to start with you, Brian. Uh, you 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 spoke about zero trust as sort of this best practice. Uh, I think you you uh, called it the critical skill or uh, the killer skill or something like that uh, earlier. And my admitted to the primitive understanding uh, of it, there's a certain recommended path of, of utilizing it. However, I suspect that in your practice, many, uh, many organizations either make mistakes on that path or uh, take the wrong turn, maybe by, by virtue of being beholden to some version of legacy, no one is starting from scratch on this, on this journey. So can you spend a few minutes talking about what, goes, what, what can go wrong? What are some of the more egregious mistakes that you've seen people make and how you fix them uh, on the security path? And what are some of the things that absolutely should be avoided when you think about zero trust and security model implementation? Yeah, yeah, good question, Alexi. So yeah, the, the survival skills of zero trust, if they're not uh, you know, followed appropriately. So yeah, first off, yeah, I guess the best way to describe it would be, you know, first off, what you shouldn't do is is do nothing, right? And what I mean by that is, you know, even if you don't take a zero trust approach, or you know, maybe you're maybe you're on the the lower end, uh, the low end of the maturity model, because really zero trust is a journey, and it's helping organizations progress and mature along that journey. Um, 
you know, so even if they're kind of at the at the low end of their their journey, you know, maybe just starting out, right? At a minimum, start using things like MFA to provide stronger authentication for users, right? Um, <clears throat> in my practice or in my work, I, I work with a lot of organizations, you know, both you know in the past and and moving forward that have had security issues and you know mfa could have solved many of those problems um you know before they happen so i can't kind of stress that enough that you know mfa is is critical uh, a critical first step um in addition to that you know make sure that logging and monitoring is turned on right this can be just as simple as using you know azure ad logging you know even if it's not being sent to some you know, log analytics database or, or um, workspace or, or Microsoft Sentinel, just ensure that the logging is is enabled and, and turned on, right? You can get a lot of value out of that, um, you know, especially in that assumed breach, um, you know, mindset. Um, in addition to that, right, one of the things that we see a lot and and why we've kind of developed this cloud adoption framework and and the different best practices and in, in methodologies is to approach the cloud differently than on-prem right you cannot take your on-premises security practices and architectural logic into the cloud you know, on prem, it was assumed that the network perimeter is is a safe and secure place, right? And we know this assumption to be untrue. Um, and you know, so don't don't take those assumptions into the cloud. You know, as you evolve and and transform into the cloud, and especially bringing data, you know, more specifically sensitive data, you know, you must take cloud security or cloud specific security controls with you and and take that assume breach approach right so um don't bring the security practices from on-prem um, into the cloud you know the well-adopted framework is you know as i mentioned earlier is you know every and you know as part of everything that we've talked about today kind of builds security into the core foundation of a move to the cloud so you know um, that's my one thing that we see a lot of is organizations kind of bringing similar security approaches to, you know, data and, and the cloud adoption, you know, from their on-prem. And, and that's just, you know, setting yourself up for, for an unsuccessful transition. Um, and, you know, to kind of you know, advocate for Microsoft, you know, if Azure is the destination for, you know, cloud workloads, there's a whole host of services and tools that can help with that um, security assessment, right? Um, you think about Azure landing zones and the enterprise scale landing zones and, you know, the recommendations, best practices, assessment tools that, you know, are available at, at, at no cost, right? I mean, so there's really no excuse to to not, if you're going to move to the cloud, to not keep, you know, to be cloud focused or cloud centric on your on security controls and, and thinking differently. So. And, and, and yet I, I am recalling a number of uh, conversations with clients that I've had over the years and I can confirm that security um, is number one concern when companies are considering the move to cloud and trusting cloud with their most sensitive data mm -hmm. platforms. And I know that the sentiment over the years has been that, secure, that the security in the cloud is somehow inherently weaker than an on-prem. You just mentioned this, oh, Brian, there was this fortress kind of mentality we control everything in the cloud we kind of kind of don't don't i think you're making a very powerful right. argument that it's not the case as long as you're doing certain things right but the sentiment is a powerful thing and i wanted to ask yuri on this real quick uh yuri i know you're working with uh, a very a wide range of clients but you focus specifically on uh, several large clients of ours in the financial services space and financial services sector for better or worse has been on the more conservative side as far as uh, trusting cloud with the data 
uh, with, with the critical data. Are you see, seeing this sentiment change? I know it's not a technical question and you prefer technical questions given your, your occupation, but what, what, what is the mood in your cloud conversation? Are we past that threshold? We, 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 we are on this gray area <laughs> because uh, um, as, as, uh, as, as Brian pointed out, and as, as, as you also pointed out, uh, some of the companies are, did not shift their mindset. Like they, they think in on-prem terms, even though they need to be in, in the cloud. And the model, the paradigm is quite different. Um, it's it's another level of virtualization. So you need to be um, adjusting to this um, and you need to always keep that in mind. So, uh, but um, I do observe more and more openness, if you like, to, to listen uh, about cloud solutions and to consider cloud solutions. Even though... Um, security teams and compliance teams still feel more comfortable because they know the area, right? I mean, they, they just, like, if you did things 100 times already, why would you do this 100 first time differently, right? <laughs> so it's, it's, in some way, it's getting out of the comfort zone, but uh, I mean, that's the only way to advance on the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, we, we, in this conversation, we've used terms data and cloud kind of not interchangeably, but oftentimes in the same sentence or in the same train of, train of thought. Uh, cloud is not just about the data, although, although data is a massive part of the rationale and value that cloud, uh, cloud deliver. But I wanted to uh, pick both your brains on, on this. What's driving what? Brian, maybe we'll start with you. In your experience, uh, clients that come to, to Microsoft, maybe from an on-prem mm -hmm. posture and think of, of data, is this the value of you know, uh, effective resource management, high performance calculations that's driving the initial sort of outreach towards the cloud or uh, indeed the new powerful data tools? And I, I guess the security is how you, whether you're experimenting with something, uh, you may be less concerned about security versus when you're trusting the core of your organization from the from the start. What, what, how do you see what's driving what in the way? Yeah, that that's a good question. I mean, I think we see, and I, I think you probably answered you know part of that question, right? I mean, we're seeing the the shift to the cloud for a number of reasons, right? We're seeing kind of data explosion. Right, where there's just this, you know, data is just data is everywhere, and it's being used for so many things. Right, talking about, you know, making decisions for businesses are relying on data. So there's just this data explosion that, you know, on-prem environments just can't, you know, physically handle and support. So you know, that's a, a certainly a big driver to cloud adoption specifically around around data and then you know the 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 cloud allows for you know a whole host of of services that can help with that data analytics data modeling um, ability to infuse that data into the business from a decision making um, operationalizing um, perspective. <clears throat> so I think that's, you know, another big, big driver. Um, but, you know, being the security guy, you know, security is, is a big focus. We're seeing a lot of organizations that are moving data to the cloud because they can better protect it, um, you know, secure it more effectively, especially around things like, you um, you know, data retention. Data retention is, is very hard. You know, we talk about, um, you know, I don't know what the right term is, but like, you know, data that's kind of existed for, for 20 years and it's out there in some server, in some, you know, server room that, that nobody knows about. And, you know, some bad actor can gain access to that data and, and you know, Organizations have no idea, right? So, 
we're seeing the shift to the cloud, you know, helping organizations kind of go through some of that, you know, legacy um, data debt, if you will, and, you know, apply a proper retention policies that meet their organization's um, requirements and, and as well as, you know, just implements better security controls um, around that data, as as we've been we've been talking about. So, you know, really those three, you know, kind of areas or or you know ideas are are really, from our perspective, seeing the big shift from data, you know, moving into into the cloud. So, great, thank you. You anything to add from your from your experience? If, if you no, if you I, took I, I ten clients that you that you work with. Which word in that sentence comes up first? Uh, you mean cloud or data modernization? Yeah. Well, well, I, I would say I, in I a mean, really rapid succession, it sounds like one word. <laughs> prior to the cloud, data platform modernization still was the thing, right? <laughs> so I would say that uh, the, the driver modernization is the driver for the cloud adoption is pushing people various kinds, right? Somebody's looking for modernizing their whole application product. Somebody's looking for modernizing their data platform. Somebody looking for better reliability. We, we covered today the well architected framework and reliability and securities are uh, first two pillars of it. And um, that's, that's what you can implement um, faster and in a more efficient manner using cloud services. Because if you're talking about on-prem, it's not only security uh, of your uh, applications and tools, more like a software part, but it's also a hardware part. And here, the cloud as, as, as a service takes um, care of a lot of these things for you. Awesome. Well, I think we'll wrap it up at this point. We have about two minutes to go until the end of the hour. We want to give our audience a chance to go refill their coffee mugs and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And special thanks to Brian and Yuri for presenting today. And um, as always, thanks to Microsoft for their, for their partnership. Have a good day, everyone. Thank All you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you.